the Pantheon, Glory Fades, Tales Remain. Phenomenon number 10, Avatarhood. Writings from the Pillar Scribe. Within the depths of this broken and twisted labyrinth, there lie scarce shreds of divinity, which may still be found. They are avatars, many of which walk amongst you without betraying their true nature or even their existence. Here, I intend to shed a light on these mysterious beings and demystify them. Avatars are incredibly powerful and influential beings, so godlike in stature that many were in fact once worshipped as a pantheon of gods by ancient humans. The source of this power slash influence are the pillars, which serve as the oversouls for their respective avatars. Each avatar holds command and mastery over a particular child, or a mortal is imbued with a portion of an avatar's essence care concept, that being the concept embodied by their pillar. Individual avatars have the capability to alter and impact an aspect of the backrooms itself, within their respective conceptual sphere. Avatars were initially created by the pillars to spread the influence of their respective concept without their direct intervention in reality, which would be disastrous. An avatar may either be directly created by a pillar, or result from a being embodying a specific concept so strongly that they forge a connection with the pillar of that concept. I have come to learn that I am an example of the latter, as a result of my blessings from the Terminus. Sometimes, they may be considered separate, with the pillar indirectly guiding the avatar or having no involvement. Other times, the pillar and avatar may be one and the same in consciousness, with the avatar being a direct incarnation slash manifestation of the pillar. In the latter case, every action performed by the avatar is of their overseer's intentional will. Yet for all their power, avatars are not entirely invincible. A part of their nature is dependent on their relationship with mortals, and with the backrooms itself. The first weakness is iron, a swift death, all things considered. It destabilizes the power which avatars command over mortals, rendering them vulnerable to mortal dangers. The second weakness is being forgotten, a slow-acting poison, a festering disease. Avatars remain in power for as long as they are known of, and recognized as the forces at play behind their duties. If avatars are neglected for too long, they will eventually fade completely, alongside the last person to remember their name. Companionship If avatars may be considered gods, then their companions may be considered akin to demigods, or the heroes of myth. Just as avatars bridge the gap between pillars and mortals, champions bridge the gap between mortals and avatars. They are similar in nature to avatars, though with several distinguishing features which make them less powerful or influential than the latter. Unlike avatars, champions do not share a direct connection with a pillar, but rather the avatar they are linked to. Although a pillar may still indirectly influence and affect a champion through that connection. Just as an avatar draws their power from a pillar, a champion draws their power from an avatar. Champions come to be when an avatar creates life in their image, or a mortal is imbued with a portion of an avatar's essence or power. Depending on the circumstance of their creation, a champion's degree of power relative to the avatar can vary, though it is never greater than the avatar's. Furthermore, avatars are not always aware of the existence of their champions. When an avatar is indeed aware, they may revoke the power granted to their champions on a whim, as seen fit, particularly if the champion is deemed unworthy through their actions. There is much debate over whether becoming a champion slash avatar makes one greater or lesser than human, but I am afraid such philosophical discussions are beyond the scape of this writing. Perhaps in the future, I may dedicate a volume entirely to that subject.